second video in my series on options contracts. I want to start by saying I am not a professional. This is not advice, okay? I'm a retail trader. This represents my understanding, and this is just a vlog about what I see. I will be putting together a simulated trade here in this presentation, and I'm going to be following that trade for a while. And with any luck, I'm going to see it triple to sextuple the gains I would have if I had just held the long position. And we'll go into how I'm using Theta and Vega to try to accomplish that. Beginning with how to choose a contract, there are some considerations to be made, all right? The first is forecast. Are you bullish, bearish, or neutral? This will dictate our strategy, and option strategies can make money in any one of these three environments. But you have to first identify what the forecast is in order to make a smart trade. The positions of the capital you have on hand are going to be resources in building that strategy. There's going to be a, a window of opportunity to do that. The time to expiration is the limiting factor on that side, and so you need to forecast to help you to be able to put together realistic expiration dates and to manage theta. The premiums of those contracts are going to be the greatest limiting factor when you're putting your strategy together. Because if you are trading only on extrinsic value gained through the selling of a contract, as I'm going to show here in this video, then the, <coughs> the, the premiums are, are going to be a huge limiting factor. Now, the Greeks are also a big part of choosing contracts. I like to say they're the risk. This is where our expression of risk is found. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth about the Greeks, but I am going to get there. This, this PowerPoint is going to go through these items in this order, and we're going to start with forecasts. So let's talk about the forecast. The ascending triangle has a breakout price of approximately $45.50 and a price target of $51.37. The forecast is bullish. Therefore, selling puts and buying calls or hedging upside losses is appropriate. This is going to dictate my strategy, and so what I'm going to do is put together a diagonal spread in which I essentially short theta. Now that's complicated, and it's risky. I want to say up front, this simulated trade that I'm going to show is very, very aggressive, and it is not suitable for all traders. Now let's talk about positions and available capital. Contracts cost money, or capital. Now, naked positions are no longer permitted in most retail brokerage accounts. So if you're going to sell a contract, you have to have that cash or that capital on hand to, be able to fulfill that contract should it be exercised. If you're going to be selling a call to exit a position profitably, that's good. You can secure gains in that way and then also take the extrinsic value from that premium from the sold called and reinvest that. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, the problem here is, is that there's a risk of losing a favorable long position. And we can mitigate that loss by increasing the number of shares we have in the marketplace utilizing the premiums. So in using a diagonal spread, essentially what I'm going to do is push the expiry of the call that I sell out in, out into the, uh, into the future, further than the calls I'm going to purchase. And that is really, really risky. Traditionally, what you want to do is, is keep that, that sold call expiry closer and those, those calls that you purchase further out. But that puts your account into, um, well, essentially not the red, but I believe it's called a debit position where you're going to need more capital than was provided by the, 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 the sale of your call to buy the calls. And I'm just going to be utilizing the capital or the premium I earned from, from the call. I'm not going to be investing any side cash. Although I could do that because in this scenario, I'm assuming that I, I sold a $39 put, which was then exercised, and now that those shares have a dollar of intrinsic value, or that position has a dollar of intrinsic value because the share price is at 40. That extra cash could be used to buy a, a call option that's further in the future than the call option that I sold, but I'm not gonna do that. Now, if you're selling a put, this is a great way to get cash. If you have cash, you can sell a put and get more cash. And if you're bullish and, and that put doesn't go into the money and that, sh that never gets exercised, then you just have, you just increased your, your, your cash position, which is amazing. Now, when you're choosing a strike price, when you're selling a put, you need to be careful because that will be an entry position. If that put runs into the money, which means the price is falling and you enter a long position as the price is falling, it's very important to make sure that the long position you enter won't turn into bag holding because as the price does drop entering into a put is into a sold put is really risky 
I sold a $39 put. It was exercise and the price bounced and that was really fortunate and it was through technical analysis and my understanding of, of statistical probabilities that, that helped me make that decision. And that puts me in a really good um, scenario now where I can, I can use that premium and, and leverage it. But again, I'm not going to do that. Not here, not in this trade. Moving on to time to expiry. Contracts lose value over time generally. Some contracts do have zero theta. Looking at this options chain here for the December 3rd calls, I have theta circled, and I have an arrow here in red showing these parentheses. These, the, it, within this parentheses is the days to expiry. And I got that wrong in my last video, and someone corrected me, so thank you. Now, about theta, you'll see theta is zero all the way to the tw anything below 27. Any strike below $27 has zero theta. Essentially, what you're doing here by buying these calls is investing in 100 shares of the underlying security without putting all of the money up front. So the current price of AMC is above $40, right? You need $4,000 to buy 100 shares of AMC. Or you could buy a $10 strike call option for $3,100. And so you're risking $900 less. And as the delta is one, for every dollar the price goes up, so does the value of your contract, of your shares. So that's how you, you minimize initial investment versus, um, versus risk. And you'll see that the, the delta drops and the contracts become cheaper. So this is our zero risk position, is zero theta. And as theta begins to increase, the the contract has a little more risk, and you start to see delta and you start to see gamma increase, all right, and as well as vega. I'm going to be trying to optimize delta, gamma, manage theta, and invest it in vega. So this is kind of how I'm how I'm looking at time to expiration is how it affects the the, the Greeks, and also it's going to be a huge limiting factor on my my premiums. Now when I sell a call, I'm trying to short theta. So I'm going to go into that a little more down the road. Premiums. That's just the bid and the ask. And you can see that the deeper in the money a call is, the more it costs. The further out a contract is to expiry, the more it costs. So if you're going to be shorting theta, basically what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I have, a, a I have 100 shares at $39 and I'm gonna sell a contract against them in the future and I'm gonna take that money from the time value of that contract and I'm gonna take it now. Similarly to the way that you can sell a share short and take that gain immediately and then use that money to, to invest further, it's the same with, with, with selling a call. Basically you're saying, hey, give me the value of that Vega and I'm gonna hope that it goes down, right? So that's what I'm saying when I'm talking about shorting Vega. This is a video by TD Ameritrade. I love TD Ameritrade. I have nothing but positive to say about their education center, the resources, the library. And I want to play just a couple of snippets from this video. I'm going to go ahead and pause my music and, 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 and get this going. Let's see if I can find my cursor. Turn off the laser pointer. Turn it off. Oh, goodness. Bear with me. Bear with me. Greeks, the options Greeks. Like the ancient gods, these Greeks oversee certain domains, including price, time, and implied volatility. The Greeks are an important part of options trading, as they tell you how changes in certain factors may impact an options price. So let's get to know them. We'll start with Delta. Like Zeus, Delta is the rule over all the other options Greeks, as it often has the biggest impact on an options value. Delta's domain is price. It identifies how much the option's premium may change if the underlying price changes $1. This means that an option with a delta of 0.40 would be expected to increase by 40 cents if the underlying rose $1. Okay, let's see here. We got another clip here at 139. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom ahead. Delta has another important use as well. Let's see if I can figure this out. It's a little tough Some on the PowerPoint. Can I even do this? Let's see, here we go. Going to 139. Bear with me here. Bear with me. This is difficult. <laughs> Gamma is Delta's Hermes, his right-hand man in the price domain. Gamma measures Delta's expected rate of change. 
If an option has a delta of 0.40 and a gamma of 0.05, the premium we expected to change 40 cents with the first dollar move in the underlying. Then to figure out the impact of the next dollar move, simply add delta and gamma together to find the new delta, 0.45. Let's move on to theta, the Greek of time decay. Theta estimates how much value slips away from an option with each passing day. If an option has a theta of negative 0.04, it would be expected to lose four cents of value every day. Remember, time decay works against buyers and for sellers. Finally, there's Vega, whose domain is implied volatility. Booyah. Vega estimates how much the premium may change with each one percentage point change in implied volatility. If an option has a Vega of 0.03 and implied volatility decreases one percentage point, the premium will be expected to drop three cents. There are a lot of factors that could cause a spike in implied volatility. Earning announcements, political conditions, and even weather. Depending on the strategy you choose, a spike in volatility could be a blessing, a curse, or have a very small impact. And the further out an option's expiration is, the higher its vega will be. In other words, options with longer expiration may react more to a change in volatility. Now, let's talk about the little brother of the options Greeks, Rho. Rho identifies how much an option's premium may move if interest rates change. And Rho's not a big deal. I say delta, gamma, theta, and vega, sometimes Rho. I don't use Rho, most people don't use Rho, we just, it's generally just forgotten when mentioning Greeks. Now I want to focus on what they were saying about vega, right? That the further out the expiry is, the more value there is, and the more response there is to vega. And so if I'm going to short vega, my potential upside losses in Vega are unlimited. And so in order to compensate for that, to hedge against that loss, I have to make sure that the calls I buy uh, will be able to do that. Essentially, I need to increase the number of shares, my, my, my exposure to, to, to the underlying asset um, above that which I initially entered. So I'm going to try to sell one call, take that, that sweet, sweet Vega, and then turn it into call options that will appreciate with Vega because it, it'll get harder and harder for me to close by back that call option that I sold if Vega increases. I'm going to move on now from the Greeks. Those rates change slowly. And we're going to we're going to just power through here. Okay, so in selling a covered call, the strike can be anywhere based on the strategy. Obviously, the further into the money you sell your call, the more premium you're going to actualize. But the problem is, is if you sell a strike below your, your cost basis, what ends up happening is, is if you invest all that, that entire premium, you're actually investing a big portion of intrinsic value, and you might as well just be selling shares. So I make sure that my strike price is above my cost basis, and so I am using only the extrinsic value to reinvest and maintaining the intrinsic value and that intrinsic value will leave me a small cash position which will help hedge my 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 long position and also give me the ability to switch gears and buy a put if things don't go the right way which is important i think it's smart to leave yourself an out so i make sure that the strike price on the call that i sell is above my cost basis i also want to make sure that i maintain my long position if you have hundreds of shares and you don't want to lose hundreds of shares don't write call options against those shares that's just all there is to it and in, in, in this trade i'm assuming that a premium was sold for 39 dollars and that's all the shares that that has had in order to maintain that position, that strike price is going to need to be higher in hopes that after initial run, profits are taken and on the retracement that that contract can be bought back. All right. So I have, I'm, I'm going to buy two call options. I'm going to sell one call option. I'm going to hope that these two options appreciate wildly, sell them. And then when the price comes down and as time passes, Theta and Vega will work negatively against the, the call that I sold, and then I'll be able to buy that contract back with the profits from my other two contracts. And then, if, if it goes really, really well, best case scenario, I'll end with not only maintaining my 100 shares in my long position, 
but also have all the money that I made from, from the calls that I, that I purchased and then sold. That's best case scenario stuff. It's that'd be sweet. I'd love to do that, and then take that cash position and 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 set up another strategy and even reutilize those 100 shares again. Best case scenario stuff, and that would be great. I'd love to see that happen. The idea is to use theta positively, and it's a negative thing, right? So you've got to short it to do that. Essentially, sell the call, take the money, and then invest it into uh, a, a Vega positive and, and uh, environment, which is what I'm trying to do. So the calls that I buy, the premium is the most limiting factor because I'm only going to get so much value out of the call that I sell. So I'm going to have to use my forecast to help me identify the best places to compromise. Obviously, you don't want to buy deep out of the money calls. You don't want to buy calls that are that have really near expiries. And those are the two things I'm going to have to compromise on because of the limits due to premiums. Now, when I'm when I'm buying those calls, um, I, I, I don't want to spend all of the premium from the call that I sold. And I kind of went over that a little bit. You want to make sure you have a little cash position still in case things go south and, and to kind of buffer yourself. Just a little hedge in cash. I'm going to do my best when I buy those calls to maximize Delta, Gamma, and Vega. That's the idea, the whole concept. Let's talk about the simulated trade. This is where things get a little more interesting. Turn my laser pointer back on. So the forecast suggests that trading calls is favorable. So this, this, this diagonal spread features calls, no puts. Mostly because I don't have the cash to sell another call at this point. And I guess I could exit my long position and then enter into a put that's below the price I sold at and then use that premium to feed this process. But that would, again, lose my long position, and I'm trying to maintain that long position, so there's no puts here. Now, selling a covered call with $39 cost basis, okay, I, I, I chose the January 21st of 2022 expiration date at the $40 strike price. And $40 is nice because it's in the money, and it's not deep in the money. I'll have a chance, there may be an opportunity to close this position out profitably. And really I'm thinking about the, the opportunity that can come from a throwback, when the price breaks out, comes up, and then drops back down. That would be a sweet swing trade, to see the price go up, cash out the extrinsic value of my of, of my uh, more speculative call cash out the intrinsic value of of my in the money call which I'll show you here in a minute and then as the price drops use that those profits to buy back this contract because theta will have decayed it and implied volatility will have dropped at that point that's why I choose to sell the $40 strike. That's how I came to that decision. And I managed to pick up $835 of premium by selling that. And this is a simulated trade. I'm gonna talk about it as if I've done it, but this is a simulated trade. Now, the premium largely represents extrinsic value because there's only like a dollar of intrinsic value, the difference between the strike price and the actual price. And that's important to know. I want to invest the extrinsic value because that's where the value from theta is represented. Now buying calls. The first call that I, that I, I purchased is a December 3rd, 2021 $40 call. The premium was $380. And I give just six strikes here. And what I want to show is that the highest Vega in that chain was, was 0 0.03. And so you can see that this call option falls in that highest Vega. The highest gamma in the chain is 0 0.05, and again, that is right where I want it. Why the $40 strike though, when I just sold a call for $40? The idea is that if the price rises above the strike price of the call that I sold, that's where my unlimited potential upside losses begin. And so by having a call at that same strike price, I can make sure that I don't lose any intrinsic value in that way. And that's why the $40 strike price. It's, it is a lot closer in your term because I expect that breakout to happen short term. If there is a throwback, that'll happen down the road. The second call is a December 17th, 2021 $40 call. 
The premium was, and that's wrong, it's not $40, it's $50. <laughs> the premium was $300. Now, I, I, I wanted a $40 call, right? But the problem is the premium. You can see the, the ask is $310 for $50, and then the $40 strike is gonna be, it's gonna be higher than $500. It's not even shown here. And this is where the compromise comes into play. So why $50? Because the breakout target price for that pattern is above $50, and I wanna see some intrinsic value enter into my, my call option. Because if that price is achieved, but close to the expiry, I wanna make sure that there is intrinsic value. Because if there's no intrinsic value, <laughs> And, and the expiration is approaching, the call will expire worthless, and that's not what I'm going for. And that's how I came to this decision, December 17th and $50. Ideally, um, December 17th is far enough out, but it is still cutting it close. I really, really wish that uh, I, 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 I could use some more cash to, to supplement this, but again, I'm just, I'm just gonna be working with the extrinsic value gained from the selling of the call. So you can tell that the Vega and the Gamma aren't the best. The Gamma on this call is 0 0.02, and the highest in the chain was 0 0.04. The Gamma high was 0 0.03, and all I've got here is 0 0.02. Oh, I'm sorry. The Vega. I said the Vega wrong. So I got the best Vega, but I didn't get the best Gamma. But that's okay, because I'm prioritizing that Vega. That's, the, that, 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 that's my strategy. The premium earned minus the cost of the contracts is $155. And this represents the intrinsic value of the call option that I sold. And I want to hold on to that. Now, the overview. This is the ascending triangle, and I've got three scenarios here colored in green, gray, and, and, and red. In purple, I have two price levels. Those are the strike prices for my call options. I have some vertical yellow lines. Those are the expiration dates. And this, this blue ascending triangle on, on, on the left. And in scenario one, the price pulls up, breaks out, comes back down and then moves to the price target. This would be a really clean move. It would be it'd be one of those five wave moves. One, two, three, four, five. And each wave would have three steps. One, two, three. 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 This would be a really clean Elliott Wave theory thing, I think. I'm not good at Elliott Wave theory, Wyckoff stuff. If you are, let me know. I think that's pretty good. Ideally, of course, we see the biggest fat green candle you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Go straight up. And that's what I'm hoping for, but I can't, you can't trade around those kinds of expectations. You can't trade around those expectations. The gray line is a neutral expectation. You see the price come up, it would test that retracement zone or that resistance level. It would then turn around, break through the lower level, and then it would bounce at, at this level of support at $40. And this would just be pure sideways action. And that can happen. It really can happen. Remember, on my four hour chart, there's a big double bottom and it's consolidating. The price is waffling and that could continue. In the red, I show a breakdown outside of the tr of the ascending triangle, a rise, a bounce back up to that level of, of then resistance, and then a further move downward. I want to talk about what I could do with these positions should each of these scenarios play out. Obviously, in the bullish scenario, you just hold on to everything, and, and as, as this December 3rd call option comes close to expiration, it gets sold, and then I have cash to set up another trade. And I, I would, I'd hold the 17th expiration as the price appreciates and eventually the intrinsic value would be greater than the extrinsic value and I have to make that determination at in the moment. And that, that consideration, intrinsic versus extrinsic value, would determine when I sell that call. In the neutral scenario, the price rises and then comes back down. And the idea here is that when the lower level, the lower trend line is pierced, and the price begins to fall that I just cut my losses on the on these two call options and hold on to that cash and what that does is reduce the essentially it reduces the profits from the call that I sold I wouldn't lose any intrinsic value and that's the point is to only use that extrinsic value 
at that point, I could hold and I could reinvest, uh, reposition if, it, if there's a bounce off the, off of 40. Or I could consider just buying the call, the call that I sold back because theta will have decreased the price, implied volatility will have fallen, and probably I would still come out ahead. Not very good, but still green. In the red, this is like worst case scenario stuff. This is nightmare stuff. This break, if, it, if, if there were a breakout here, that would be a big red flag. Now, it is possible for a breakout and then a pullback, but judging that sort of thing is tricky. I don't know if I would want to hold through that. I may, depending on what the indicators tell me, but not likely. If if the price falls below this lower trend line, it's probably just cut losses and then use the amount of cash that I have from the intrinsic value of the shares of the call, the call that I sold to buy a put and to start hedging downside losses. And this would actually not be bad in terms of the call that we sold because now the call that we sold can expire worthless in the future or be closed very, very cheaply. So the position, this, this trading strategy is very aggressive, but it does provide opportunity to um, adapt to the, the price, price direction. But I, I just wanna say changing your position is not easy you've got one shot if you mess up that one shot the whole trade could become just a disaster so if there is a drop below that trend line and then a pullback and i've already switched gears to go you know to, to buying a put and and to trying to close my call I, i'm, I'm going to be hurting so i want to be very very careful and very deliberate it's kind of like driving if you, if the light turns yellow, you either get through the intersection or you stop, but you don't stop at the middle of the intersection. That is the same feeling that I'm trying to convey here. Now, Bulkowski has some information regarding throwbacks, and his trading tips say to just expect it. And that's because 58% of 10,305 chart patterns with up upward breakouts had throwbacks since the year 2000. So for the last 21 years, you know, these throwbacks are super common, super common. And so this is probably what I'm be looking for is, and I'm gonna get my laser pointer out here. You can see in these examples, the price breaks out. And I, I love that this example is actually an ascending triangle because this is exactly where we are. <laughs> You'll see that there's one, two, three tests, a dip, and then a boom, a surge. And that's what I'm hoping for. So an 8% rise in six days. If, if the price doesn't explode with wild momentum as anticipated, this is probably gonna happen. If the volume doesn't reach those volume event levels, if I don't see 1 million, 2 million, 3 million volume candles on the one minute chart, and if we don't see volume really picking up, but we see this breakout, this throwback is very likely. And that 8% gain a rise above the breakout price could be a very good place for me to cut my, the calls and then hold on to that cash and try to close the call that I sold. And you'll see it takes, he says, 12 days to come back here. And then if the price goes down and comes back up, this is a power play. This, this is momentum. This is, hey, we went too far, big push up. So at this point, I'd be trying to close the call down here and repositioning for a move upward. This would be a really thing, to, really tricky thing to gauge. The momentum indicators would need to be really clear, and this would be a really risky swing trade. But it's important to be ready for it, and I think that the simulated trade does provide for that opportunity. All right, the the throwback price trend can the price trend can help indicate whether or not the throwback is likely. So Blakowski says that the price trend leading to the breakout can help determine whether price will throw back or not. If price has more than three consecutively higher closes ending the day before the breakout, then expect to have a lower probability of throwing back. And that's the thing I was thinking about when I was looking at, at our ascending triangle. It'd be really nice to see a couple of clean higher highs before the big boom. That would be nice because then our chances of throwback are nominal. But if this breakout occurs too speedily, 
then a throwback may be likely. But of course, if it does break out too quickly, that's going to be a momentum thing, and we're going to see a different kind of move, the kind of move we saw in June and January. And this wraps up my, my video about options. This one is not so easy. If you don't, if you aren't fluent in talking about Greek strike prices and, and how to use contracts, this didn't make a lot of sense. And, you know, the it might be good to watch the, the last video and do a lot of other research. I'm not necessarily the savviest uh, trader. What I really excel at is technical analysis. And hopefully I'll, uh, this trade will, will prove beneficial and Makes, make me some money. I'm gonna keep up with it on the weekends, I think, making these 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 videos about options, and just, just stay tuned for more updates.